Hello SOLIDWORKS Power Users, this is Alim Vargato from Trimax Solutions with one of the craziest tech tips that you have ever seen. I need to give credit to my colleague uh, Stephen Petrock who created an amazing blog post on one of the least known features of uh, the Power Trim tool. Um, and then did a bit more research about what the Power Trim can do. And I was thinking, why don't we create the ultimate guide for using the Power Trim tool? The weed whacker, as Steven said. As Steven mentioned, by simply clicking and dragging, you see this gray outline. So whenever you, you touch something, uh, the entities that you are touching are going to be trimmed to the next barrier. And you see the red dot that he uh, described in his video that allows you to do dynamic undo. So if I want to go now in a different direction, I can certainly do that. What else can you do with the power trim? What about extending instead of trimming? So if you hold down the shift key, you can actually cross over an entity. Notice how it grows to the next available entity. Let me shift drag this one. The other cool thing that happens, the endpoint of the entity that you are extending gets a coincident relation to the entity that um, establishes that barrier. So take a look at this, right? Shift, drag, and this grows and gets coincident relations. Now, mind you, the same thing happens um, if you do uh, trimming. So if I trim this, so no, no shift, notice the coincident relation being applied to, to this line. What else? Can this power trim be used for? So let's take a look at this corner, right? Notice that these two lines um, are joined by this endpoint. There is no coincident relation there, and uh, there is not a very easy way to dislodge them. I mean, there is a way, but power trim can also do that. You can select the entity that you'd like to dislodge from this um, connection, right? So I select it, now I move my mouse, and I redefine the endpoint of this entity. Notice how these two are no longer joined together. So that is pretty nice. The next thing that you can do is actually using this technique for establishing the endpoint. So I can select this one. That's the selection. I know this one is the one that's going to change. And then I select something else. Let's say, let me select the circle or the arc. Notice the coincident relation there. Uh, let me select this guy and then go all the way here to reestablish the endpoint. And of course, I can extend it then all, oh, let me select it. I can extend it all the way there. The other cool thing about this extend technique or trim technique is the fact that it works also for entities that um, are not gonna establish a common endpoint. So for example, I can take this line and then select this one. And you can see the coincident relation that's being applied between the two of them. And the same thing with work for trimming. So let's make this one a little bit longer. And then let's try to trim this by this entity. So I'm going to select this close to this endpoint and then select the line. And you can see how the coincident relation works. So this is excellent, right? What else is in this uh, power trim command? So let's take a look at the bottom checkboxes that are in the property manager of the trim command. Keep trim entities as construction geometry and ignore trimming of construction geometry. For that, let's create a different sketch. So I'm going to go back before this sketch was created, maybe create another one on the top plane. And let's imagine you already have a center rectangle, right? Now, one cool thing about center rectangles, like an extra tip for you, um, test uh, the creation of the construction line from the midpoint. That's actually pretty cool. Let's apply some dimensions here. I'm going to make this uh, 20, and I'm going to make this 15. What if I want to trim this entity? So let's try a power trim. Notice the dimensions are being applied, and now I'm losing the dimension if I trim that way. All right, so let's undo this. And let's try the power trim again, but this time, let's keep the trim entities as construction geometry. How cool is that? I was able to do it without disturbing this. Now, what about making sure that the end is, that um, the construction geometry doesn't get trimmed when I move my mouse? So right now, if I try to do that, notice how these are getting trimmed. Now, what if I use the option to ignore trimming of construction geometry? So let's say I'm going to go from top all the way to the bottom. You can see how that line got trimmed, but the construction geometry is being ignored. 
So I hope after seeing this little video that you agree with me. The power trim name is well deserved. It's one of the most powerful tools that we have in SOLIDWORKS. And you know what's interesting? We are covering tips like this and many more in our Essentials Training class. So you can become a power user after just simply taking the Essentials Training. Hope to see you in my class. Bye.